Now we're going to apply what we've learned to advertisements. We want to look at how some advertisements that use statistics might be using them in a misleading way. And this list here are the things that we want to think about. Um, first of all, how could the way the sample was taken have biased the results? How could the question wording have biased the results? How could non-response have biased the results? How could the social desirability effect have biased results? Also, um, does the ad really represent the survey results uh, like it claims to? Because sometimes they don't. And also just use your common sense. Is there anything that just seems wrong about the advertisement? You do want to use vocabulary here. Um, and there are three ads that we're going to look at today. Um, so the first one here, let's take a look at it. It says that uh, 113,597 doctors from coast to coast were asked, um, and more doctors in the survey smoked camels than in any other cigarette. Than any other cigarette. Um, so let's assume that they're not completely out and out lying here uh, and see how these statistics might be a bit misleading. It's arguing that more, so uh, we don't know exactly what number that is, but more at least, smoke camels than any other cigarette. Um, and we can clearly tell that this is trying to make the claim that camels are something your doctor smokes, so there's something that they're not that bad for. You trust your doctor, your doctor wouldn't do something unhealthy. And we see this, you know, serious and, and authoritative gray-haired doctor in the doctor's coat with the stethoscope here and a cigarette. Uh, so the claim in this first ad only one D. Or it tries to claim. So let's think about what could be uh, wrong or misleading with this. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, how the sample was taken. Let's just, uh, that's this first thing here. Um, well, one thing, uh, maybe this sample is biased. We're not talking about all doctors. We're not saying all doctors are smoking camels. Um, we're not even getting the responses from all doctors about whether or not they think camels are healthy. We're saying of the doctors who smoke camels, more of, or of the doctors who smoke, more of them are smoking camels. So maybe this is a biased sample. because it's not including the opinions, opinions of doctors who don't smoke. Which is clearly relevant to this claim about the health effects of uh, smoking camels. Um, let's see, question wording. This is our open and closed question. Positive or negative wording and question order. Um, so with the question uh, wording, maybe it was a closed question that left off other popular options. So for example, if the options were camels and then two things that no one has ever heard of, well, duh, most people pick camels out of those three options, even if their real preference would be something entirely different. Now 
non-response bias. Maybe health-conscious doctors just threw everything from the cigarette companies out and didn't bother to respond to it. So you only had a few uh, doctors who were willing to respond. Or maybe um, the doctors don't like, who don't like camels didn't open up the package from the camel company. We don't know if any of these are true, but these are just ways to practice with our thinking about statistics, practice how it could be um, biased. Social desirability. Um, maybe these, you know, this is, looks like it's 1950s or so. Um, yeah, especially given the women in the background. Um, maybe at this point uh, they're surveying male doctors and, uh, you know, these male doctors are being all macho and kind of, you know, like this, this guy here. Um, and maybe some of them really like smoking a really girly brand of cigarettes and they won't fess up to it because they're embarrassed. Um, does the ad really represent survey results? We kind of have to assume so. There's nothing t t j that jumps out at us that it wouldn't in this one. Um, but how about common sense? How many doctors really smoke cigarettes? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Okay, so like two doctors smoke camels and one doctor smokes something else? I mean, that's not really arguing their, um, their health impacts. We'd have to know how many doctors think that smoking is healthy for you at all, or how many people do it even though they think it's not healthy. So those are the types of things that we're looking for uh, when we're analyzing advertisements. So let's look at a second one. This one is for dog food. This one says 8 out of 10 dogs prefer natural choice lamb and rice formula. And this is based on paired preference tests performed on this date. Um, and so what's happening here is that basically they take the dogs into the room, they give them two bowls, and they see which one the dog eats. So here uh, was natural choice lamb and rice formula. That's the one in sort of brownish kibble. Um, the other one's in red. And so 76.7 chose natural choice over Yukonuba. Um, 73.3% chose natural choice over natural balance, um, and 67.3% chose natural choice over science diet. So uh, it's clearly claiming your dog is going to like this better than other brains. So let's look at this. First, let's look at the sample. Um, maybe the breed of dog is not representative. So 
So for example, maybe this was all chihuahuas who were doing the testing, and that says nothing about whether or not a golden retriever uh, would like the same stuff. Um, question wording. Uh, now, obviously these are dogs, they're not being asked questions, um, but there actually still is, uh, could be some question wording effects in a sort of a broader sense. Um, these dogs were given a paired choice. It's not which, not like giving them like five different bowls of food and seeing which one they eat. It's giving them two different bowls of food. Um, and they have to choose between those two. So maybe um, there is some other brand of food that isn't one of these four choices that are listed on the advertisement. Um, so these were paired tests. was an even more preferred brand. Not an option. Or kind of paralleling the positive and negative phrasing um, for questions, um, were the dishes the same? Or was the lamb and rice formula in a bigger dish, or a fancier dish, or I don't know, some sort of more attractive to the dog uh, dish? Um, we can also have issues with non-response. How many dogs didn't eat either one? So maybe they brought in, you know, a hundred dogs and only ten of them ate any food. Well, that's not really supporting their claim that your dog is going to like natural choice. Social desirability. Again, these are dogs. You wouldn't really think this would be an uh, impact. But dogs are very social creatures. They want to please their people. So if um, the handler, uh, the owner of the dog, is sort of cueing the dog to eat one rather than the other, that could actually have an impact on the results. The dogs want to please their owners. And one thing not to overlook about this one is, does this really uh, uh, represent the survey results? This is an easy one to overlook, but take a look at these numbers. 67.3% is not 8 out of 10. 76.7% is still not 8 out of 10. It would round up, but this one's really stretching it, and these two aren't even close. So <laughs> none of the survey results actually break 80%. And also common sense says that uh, we don't know if my dog is actually going to line up with the taste of these dogs uh, in, in this survey, even to begin with. Okay, our final ad. It's another one here. It looks all very official. Um, and this text you can't read on here, but I've written it out again over here. Um, this is again for cigarettes. A medical specialist is making regular bi-monthly examinations from a group of people from various walks of life. Again, this is 1950s or so, 1960s. 45% have smoked Chesterfield for an average of over 10 years. After 10 months, the specialist reports observing no adverse effects on the nose, throat, and sinuses of those smoking Chesterfields. So uh, let's think about that one. First of all, let's think about the sample. Um, maybe they only picked people who were healthy 
and alive and that they knew didn't have any medical problems um, to look at. Remember, after all, that while smoking increases the risk for cancer and assorted other problems, it's not guaranteed that every single person who smokes is going to have those problems. They might have just picked people who, it was clear, didn't have those problems. Um, question wording um, is not so much of an impact here um, because uh, they're not being asked questions, they're just being examined. Um, so we don't necessarily need to put that one in, uh, but non-response would be quite relevant. Did the people who refuse to participate have worse health? Um, social desirability uh, here again it is a uh, medical experiment so it may very well be that social desirability was kind of tied up into this non-response the people who were like feeling bad because they've been smoking and they've been trying to quit it and now they're having all these medical problems that they sort of felt bad revealing that and so weren't willing to come forward and do that um, so um, we might have some social desirability effect impacting the non-response, uh, but since they weren't being asked questions, it doesn't look like, there's probably not a separate social desirability piece. Um, does what's said here in the ad actually represent the survey results? Sir, wow, really cannot write there. One very good question to ask, especially with um, cigarette and medical advertisements, is did the researcher feel pressured to report good results? Notice in here no adverse effects on the nose, throat, or sinuses. What about the lungs? Lung cancer is the big thing that cigarettes have been blamed for. So it's kind of striking that lungs are not represented here. That kind of makes me think that, well, maybe there wasn't a nose effect, maybe there wasn't a throat effect, maybe there genuinely wasn't a sinus effect, but maybe their lungs were like clogged with cancer. That's an entirely possible thing. And also a little bit of common sense. If, as we suspect, they might only have picked healthy people for the initial examinations, um, 10 months is really not all that much time. Um, we wouldn't, we would expect the uh, effects of cigarette smoking to show up decades later, not necessarily 10 months later. And that, overall, is how you can start looking at advertisements.